Hi, I'm Iona, Assistant Director at the Marble Falls Public Library, and you're listening to Book, Line, and Sinker, a podcast from the staff here at the Marble Falls Public Library. This podcast is all about reading, books, movies, and other topics related to the public library. We're really excited to share our thoughts with you, and we hope you enjoy the show. All right, welcome back, listeners. We are on episode eight, and today we are going to be talking about memoirs. I have Misty and Mary with me today. If you want to greet the listeners. Hello. Hello. So before we get into the topic, I wanted to start off with a little game, and it's going to be rapid fire questions, and we're each going to get 30 seconds to answer questions about books and libraries and that stuff. So we're going to start with Misty. I'm going to ring the bell, and she's going to get 30 seconds to answer as many questions as she can. All right, are you ready? All right, yes. Let's do this. (laughs) Let me get my timer going, and it's going to start when the bell rings. All right. All right. The last book you finished. A Trader's Kiss. Characters or plot? Characters. Do you judge a book by its cover? Absolutely. Book to movie or book to TV show? Book to movie. Happy or sad endings? Happy. Classics or new books? New books. Searching for a book or getting recommendations? Mm, Searching for a book. Our world or fictional world? Fictional, absolutely. Series or standalone? Series. Top three favorite genres? YA, YA, and YA. <laughs> Long or short chapters? Oh, Go ahead and answer. Oh, uh, short. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> How many did I get? 11? Copies. Yeah, 11. That's actually more than I thought. So. All right. Ready, Mary? Mm-hmm. Ready. Go. Name the first three books you can think of. Oh no! Um, Court of Thorns and Roses, The Giver, Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Books that make you laugh or make you cry. Oh, um, Ellen DeGeneres always makes me laugh. Um, anything about a dog dying makes me it's cry. It's just either or. Oh, sorry. Waste <laughs> 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 the time though. <laughs> paperback or hardback? Uh, paperback. Weirdest thing you've used as a bookmark? A uh, leaf. Dang it, that's all I got. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> this is too funny. Are you ready? Oh. Okay. So, all right. can, I'm going to give you the bell. All right. And on go. Where does, oh, heroes or villains? Villains. A book everyone should read. Oh, uh, Harry Potter. <laughs> long or short books? Oh, you Ooh, done short. Okay. On average, how long does it take you to read a book? Uh, three days. Do you pre-order books? No. Okay. Um, name the first three books you can think of. Ah, um, so Harry Potter, because it's on my <laughs> mind, uh, Bossy Pants, because I'm going to talk about it later, and uh, the Next Year in Havana. All right, yeah, um, our world or fictional world? Our world. All right, and there we go. So, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that was fun. I think I just, I had longer short chapters, and then I had longer short books. Ah. Oh, you didn't get to my favorite one, rich or poor characters. Okay, well, rich or poor characters. Ooh, that's a good one. I was going to say rich. I was going to say poor. Know. I would say poor, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like to see them fun. rise up. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe appreciate. I'm, I'm still on my uh, kick from reading Crazy Rich Asians. Oh, it's books that make you laugh or make you cry. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you have me name things that I'm just... <laughs> well, it's books that make me laugh. For sure. All right, that was fun. I want to play that in the future. I'm going to have to think of some good questions about books. Submit your questions. Yes, submit Mm -hmm. your questions or game ideas that you would like us to play. Uh, I want to start doing little icebreakers so you can get to know us, the librarians, a little bit better. So today we'll get into our topic. Uh, I wanted to talk about autobiographies or biographies, but I think um, I'm going to stick with memoirs because that's what most of us have read, and it's one of the popular... Uh, genres for the first time memoirs and biographies have outsold cookbooks um, and that's kind of incredible because cookbooks have been number one for pretty much since the beginning in the nonfiction genre so I want to start off why do y'all think that memoirs have become so popular I think well first it's kind of an escape from our lives similar to fiction I think we kind of get to dive into someone else's worlds but then I also think it can be relatable Mm -hmm. So sometimes we want to read someone that is like us, who's been through struggles and how they overcome them. And so I think it's just kind of for both entertainment, but also I think just so we can 
relate to somebody out there? I think so too. I think that it's, um, you look at things and you think, whoa, these people look like they're interesting. Are they or are they not? Could they just be playing the character that you're watching on TV or that you're reading about? You want to hear it from their perspective and see, are they really normal? Are they human? Is kind of the way I look at it. Um, I think when you're reading a memoir, I think people feel that they're getting something like secretive or like forbidden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. they're getting to look into this person's life that they've never been able to. And when people write, a lot of times they're really open and they mm -hmm. give you kind of the nitty gritty they and bear themselves. Um, mm -hmm. I think that entertains us, but also makes us feel like Mary said, kind of we feel like we can relate to them mm -hmm. because these people that we mm -hmm. love. Um, or that we don't even know have the same experiences as us. So what is your favorite memoir or biography? The first one was Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham, but the reason I read hers is because I loved Gilmore Girls so much, and so I kind of wanted to get a behind-the-scenes look of Gilmore <laughs> Girls. Yeah. Um, she kind of talked more about parenthood, though, so I was kind of disappointed. But she's still really entertaining to, ta um, to read about. And then Ellen DeGeneres, I listened to the audio of Seriously, I'm Kidding, and it was hilarious. Like, just her like reading any, was. just her talking, and she can be completely serious. It just cracks me up. She's just <laughs> naturally funny. And so I, if you ever want to listen to one of these memoirs, I recommend listening to them because you get the actual author. And that's what Amanda I think that's I, awesome. Yeah, Amanda and I were talking about that last week, how it's just really, audiobooks are really great to listen to, like, the author talk about their mm -hmm. life. Do they all do their own, though? S Usually, a good majority, mm -hmm. especially the comedians. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Your favorite? My favorite one is um, I. I've read three. Uh, read two by Bobby Bones, and one by Anna Ferris, unqualified. But my favorite one that I read was the Fail Until You Don't. Um, his first one was more of a behind the scenes. Here is who I am. Here is how I got to where I my rise to fame, my struggles. Fail Until You Don't is um, a little bit more. It's a little bit more raw. It's just, it's very inspirational in my opinion. And it made me feel like, well, it didn't make me feel like we are best friends now since I've read that. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> so a lot of people know who Anna Ferris is, but who is Bobby Bones? Because I actually didn't know him before you introduced me to who he was. Right. He is a radio talk show. Um, he, he does a morning show. It started out of Austin, but he also has dipped into the country music world with, he goes on to American Idol, he just does a lot of behind the scenes, a lot of the breaking stars that you will hear. Um, but the country music world is really his roots. He was on American Idol? He was on American Idol. I didn't know that. Yep. He was actually, <laughs> he was the, um, he was the mentor, the advisor for these stars, or for the up and coming American Idols. One of my favorite memoirs has been Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. I thought it was absolutely hilarious and really relatable as like a working woman. But last month I read this book and it's called The Curse of the Boyfriend's Sweater by Alana Okun. I think that's how you say her name. I had never heard of her, but it's about like knitting like and crafting and how it's seen as like an old woman thing. And she's like, well, what's wrong with like being an old woman? And she's like, she's young. And it just talks about the therapeutic uh, nature of crafting and um, the stereotypes that go with it. And it was really funny, really great. So is she just a, an ordinary person who wrote a book? Or yeah, I never heard of her. I actually haven't even looked her up, but I don't think, I think she's just a writer. Um, oh. And this is kind of her memoir about knitting but it's, she's good. It was hilarious. And then one of my favorite books of all time is The Color of Water. And it's a black man's tribute to his white mother. It's beautifully written and it's a story about how he grew up with a black father who was a minister and his mother was a white Orthodox Jew. And um, how uh, he kind of came to his identity through his mother and his father. And yeah, it's it's a really great memoir. I would recommend it for anyone. So while we're on the topic of memoirs, and Misty kind of touched on this earlier, um, about how much of this person is actually real and how much is falsified, I think uh, some big conversations have come out of the genre with falsified memoirs. Um, if y'all can remember A Million Little Pieces, 
mm-hmm. by James Frey. That was a huge controversy. It was like an Oprah's book club, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. book club pick. And then it was like, yeah, he lied about all of this. And then there's the Holocaust one that was really famous. A tale about this author's escape from the Warsaw Ghetto to safety among a pack of wolves. And yeah, it was like completely fiction. Like none of it was true. She wasn't even in a ghetto at any time. Um, So I was just, can you really trust a memoir? And does it matter? I think not always. (laughs) I think that our memories are not that great, to be Mm -hmm. quite honest. Like I'm very surprised that these people remember the exact conversations they had. But then again, honestly, sometimes I don't really care. I mean... I do in a way, but then again, I read them more, I think, to just entertain myself, to kind of understand people's situations. So in certain things, like if a conversation is a little off, I don't care so much about that. But Mm -hmm. yes, if people are relating to your book because you went through something really, really rough and they just relate so much to you and find inspiration from you and then it's all wrong, I think that can completely shatter somebody. And I think that... It's, there's a lot of people that go through a lot of abuse, and I, I think it's pretty bad if you're falsifying some kind of abuse that you've been through mm-hmm. and that you're really going to affect these people that have been through it. I think, I think it does matter <laughs> in that situation. I think it does. I'm thinking about this now that we're discussing this. I've told you about the ones that I've read, and I completely forgot about another one that I'd read a couple years ago, Live Original, Sadie Robertson. It's a young adult one. And I completely forgot about reading that one, and I loved it because I think that she's so, she's just so honest. And I always wanted just to recommend that young girls look up to, hey, read this. She's a good inspiration. So I think about that and go, yeah, it kind of would offend me if she was falsifying a bunch of information because in our job, I want to be able to give these books to people and go, hey, this girl's a huge inspiration. And how bad would it suck if everything I just sat there and said is completely false, you know? And the same goes for Bobby Bones. I would be devastated if I read and found out that he is not who he's making himself out to be. So to me, it matters. But like my husband's always saying, you can't trust Hollywood. So Yeah, yeah. I see, yeah, and I think people have a tendency to embellish their past, um, which is understandable. Because sometimes I think of childhood memories, and they probably didn't happen like I remember. Right. But yeah, right. They did. Um, but if you're going to go through the trouble of writing a memoir, yeah, I think it does matter that you have a at least a general sense of honesty. Because if you want to embellish something to the extreme, just write fiction Fiction, book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> true. Mm-hmm. Don't sell it as true. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting, and I think it's hard to trust some memoirs, especially with certain people and the kind of all the media that's gone around them. But then there's other memoirs that are, like, really brutally honest, and, mm-hmm. like, there's no way they made that up. They had to experience that, um, which I find with a lot of comedians. Mm-hmm. Their memoirs, I always expect them to be absolutely hilarious, which they are, but they often are the darkest. Going into a, kind of my next topic is what memoirs or biographies we've read lately. I recently listened to The Last Black Unicorn by Tiffany Haddish, and I mean, some of that those chapters just were devastating. Um, and same with Eat the Apple by Matt Young. That one's not for the faint of heart. He talks about like the brutally like horrible things about soldiers and going to war. Mm. On a lighter topic, have you all read any good memoirs lately? <laughs> Not really. Um, the one I'm interested in that I think is coming out soon is um, Whiskey in a Teacup by Reese Witherspoon. Oh, yes. I think that I'm looks so excited. adorable. The cover's adorable. I, I love the adorable. title. I think that's just so cute. Um, I'm interested in that one for sure. And I would love to have her perspective too because she's made such a path in the female industry of Hollywood that Mm -hmm. I just would love to hear her perspective. And I think she does great things. And I love love how she is with her kids. Like I just think it would be really cool to hear about her life. I'm very excited about that one. I want to, I would like to eventually read the one by Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. I did read the one by Anna Faris. It did not make me become Team Anna like I had anticipated. (laughs) She's funny. She, and I do give her that. <laughs> She's funny. I just... Yeah, not Team Anna. Sorry. I heard <laughs> Kevin Hart's was kind of dark, too. That's, not dark, That's what I was wondering. It's, it's, yeah, not as lighthearted as... So I'm kind of hesitant to try it, too. But I just I just think he's hilarious, though. So him yeah, narrating funny. it, I bet, is so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. One I read recently was Educated by Tara Westover. 
That's like the book with the big pencil on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw <laughs> um, that one. Yeah, so she uh, lived in like a group of survivalists and didn't go to school till she was like 17. And then wow. she, yeah. And so she talks about that journey to education and she, it was really well written and I, it almost, it doesn't read like fiction, but the narratives really keeps you going. I read that I Am Malala that one Mm -hmm. and again talking about this I'm just remembering maybe I have read a few more of these biographies than I realized because that one was amazing I think how could this girl come from her background being told no you can't learn and fight (laughs) for the right to learn and stand up stand up to the Taliban so that was a really good book too Hmm. so just for fun what memoirs would you like to see come out Hmm. I am drawing a complete I know, total I blank too. on that question. Who we can. I, it, it's oh, a, Taylor I Swift. I would love. I was thinking a that memoir <laughs> by Taylor Swift. If you don't know, I'm obsessed with Taylor Swift. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like she's really good about showing her personal life, anyways. Especially if you follow her on Instagram, mm-hmm. it's all about her cats. And or if you listen I to her just, songs. And <laughs> true, true. Her songs are pretty much a memoir. But I still, I don't know. I just. Yeah. Uh, I just think it would be really good. I would love to learn about her. But she... I feel like she might be too private at the I same time. I think so. I think so. Which, fair enough. I cannot think of anybody's life that I want to read about. I'm horrible on that one. I'm trying to think of anybody else. Mine is also a singer. Britney Spears. I would love... She doesn't have one already? No, she doesn't. Really? And I, I mean, I know that she probably won't write it, but she'll probably have some hand in it. And I just really would like to know what happened in 2007. Yeah, the behind the crazy times. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I know, yeah. I, I loved her through it all. But I just, it would be interesting hmm. to know. It would yeah. be interesting. Yeah, I bet she, she'll come they up with all, that. It's a trend now, it seems like. It really is. A lot oh, of them. They've become so popular. People buy them. It's not just they make them to uh, kind of get things out and write. Um, memoirs are growing in popularity every year. Okay, so I thought Sarah Mass. I want her. Oh, My favorite yes. author, I want to hear. I'd like to know. Tell me what goes on in your life that has you have this awesome plots and brains and no I want to know where when it all started mm-hmm and just what got her to where she's at probably yeah. in high school but she's gonna be in Houston I October saw, 27th I saw, no I saw two which so. is a Saturday yeah so if y'all like the uh, Court of Thorns and Roses or any of her other series that we've been talking about she's gonna be in Texas it's like one of her four stopping points mm-hmm. I thought that was pretty cool has JK Rowling written a memoir I don't, I don't know. know I feel like she'd be really interesting too I bet you she has because she's just brilliant. I was going to say, I, I don't know if she has, because I feel like I would know about it. But. I feel like I would know about it, too. I need to look that up. I've seen, I know well, that she there. wrote her book, like, on napkins mm-hmm. and stuff, or she wrote some of the chapters on napkins. I know she came from a very, very small means in the beginning. Well, I'm going to wrap this up. We have about four episodes left this season, and then we're going to take a small break. So if y'all have any topics that you want to hear next season, anything you want us to talk about, let us know. Send us an email. Come to the library. And next week, we are going to be discussing books to TV and movies. Um, That's a topic we've kind of touched on lightly, um, but we're going to get really into it. So if you like movies and TV, listen in. It'll premiere next Thursday. 